Hi, in this video we'll be doing some exercise question from the past paper using the energy equation that we have learned last time. Let's recall that we have equation work done equals to F times D, GPD equals to MGH, KD equals to half MV squared, power equals to energy over time, and power equals to force times velocity. We'll cover two questions in this video, so let's do this one and also this one on page 11 and 12. Pause the video and try it yourself. A few moments later. Okay, I hope you have finished it already. If you don't, you can always try to pause at any time that you want and give yourself a try. So for the first question, uh, it showed you there is a rock that is falling and obviously something to do with GPD probably. And it tells you the mass. So usually what I would do when I see a number in the question is I will put the symbol next to it so you know this is m mass and here we've got uh, a or we can also say it's g in this question and so it asks you to find the weight so this is something that you have learned in the previous chapter that is with the equation w equals to mg and that is 75 times 10 so 750 the unit should be newton because you know it's a force for the weight part b it says the rock fall from the rest. This is important. So that means u equal to zero, initial velocity is zero, through a distance of 50 meters. So this is h. Again, I would recommend you to put down the variable next to it before it hits the water. So calculate the kinetic energy before hitting the water. And so if you just look at the question itself, and the normal intuition would tell you, oh, if you see kinetic energy, Think about the kinetic energy formula. If you, if you do that, that is half mv squared. By the way, you need to memorize the equation in IGCSE. And in this case, you'll find out, hey, you have got m, but you don't have v velocity, the final velocity. You don't have that. And so that means it is not really something you can do directly to find out the kd. And so you have to think more thoroughly, and you should find out According to conservation of energy, you can actually see that the rock before it start to fall, I think it should probably be here actually. So it should have GPD, so you can try to write it down on your diagram also, it helps you to visualize. And while it is going down, before it hits the water, all this energy will convert into kinetic energy. And the reason why the question specify, in case you're wondering, before hitting the water, that is something to do with the KD or GPD when it go into the water or when it is hitting the water, some of the energy will convert into, I mean, uh, into some other energy as well. So that will get complicated and the equation, the calculation will be totally different. So that's why uh, they only ask you before hitting the water for its ke so for the calculation that means you can find ke so you can write ke equals to the gpd because of conservation of energy and that equals to the equation which again you should have remember it which is mgh that we derived earlier so by substitution the rest will be easy that will be 75 times 10 times 15 which is a height change and so using your calculator, you should find 11250. The unit is joule for energy. And part C, it asks you when the rock hits the water, like I said, suggest what happened to the KD of the rock during the impact. So you really have to think about different types of energy that you learned at the very beginning of this chapter. So what you can say is the KD of the rock remember to specify the object transform into something else to of course when you throw something in the water you should hear sound so sound energy and you can also imagine uh, when these things got flown into water there will be water splash right and therefore that water splash you have to think about what kind of energy it is and the movement of the water, of course, is kinetic, and also it may go up as well. So I would say 
uh, mainly I would say KE and if you want to you can say GPE also of the water splash however uh, when I look at the question and that's something you should do as well in maybe quiz or exam there are three marks in total and so if you try to judge yourself like all my answers here uh, Shang energy should be one mark and then KD of the water splash should be the second mark so I should write something more in this case so I will be saying uh, think about the actual scenario the rock would not just be stopped by the water surface right I mean the rock would, would still sink through the water otherwise it doesn't make sense if the rock all of the KD converted and it stop because when you say velocity equal to zero then literally no KE right so it's not really all the KG converted into sound and KE of water it's only some okay so we can say some KG of the rock converted into that too but then some will remain okay and so you can say uh, some KG of the rock remains as it sink and there's another point that you can try to make is uh, as you know if you swim you know there's water resistance or if you simply try to put your hand and try to move around uh, inside the water you find out there must be resistance and resistance that is stronger than the air because because water is more dense than air but anyway there must be some resistive force in the water water resistance to take away the KE and that is called the Wharton against water resistance all right and then you can say uh, as a sink and convert or transform let's say stick with transform to work done against water resistance you may say, hey, why don't we say work done against water resistance? So strange, so strange the name, water against water resistance. Can we say simply, oh, the KD converted into water resistance? The answer is no, never do that. The answer is that for the unit of energy, it is in Joule, J. And for the unit of water resistance, which is a force, is in Newton they are not even the same dimension right they are not equivalent to each other and therefore you cannot compare that just like you can't say uh, I my weight is bigger than your height that doesn't matter that doesn't mean anything uh, it doesn't make sense at all and so here's the same idea and therefore we are more like referring to the energy to energy we're comparing energy to energy only so for the force that take away the energy from you is actually the work done against them so this is a name that you need to learn the language that you need to write in the exam let's move on to the next question again if you haven't tried it try it yourself first and you can pause the video now if you want to so for first part they show you a system which they move the package up using the conveyor belt so it asks you state three types of energy other than GPG to which the electrical energy supplied to the motor is converted so yeah for sure that it moved up so for sure that it has GPG but other than that what is that electrical energy converted into so I would say for sure the first thing that you should do is kinetic energy because uh, when the package is moving of course it has certain velocity and then it, you should also have sound energy because there must be some sound unless yeah, there's no way you can make a completely silent machine and lastly uh, if you try to think about it the machine may also get warmer or maybe there's some sort of friction uh, in it also so that will be thermal energy eventually part B so it provides you the mass I'll write M next to it. Calculate the GPD when it move through this height H. So I think it's very obvious that you have to use the equation MGH, 
which is GPE, gravitational potential energy. And so we have got mass to be 36. G, you should take it as 10 if they didn't tell you. And H is 2.4. So just uh, calculate using your calculator. So the answer should be 864. Again, the unit should be in joule. Part C, it said the package is rise through the vertical height, 2.4, which is the same as the previous. So nothing new, except they tell you the new information that is the time it takes is 4.4 seconds. So uh, asking you to calculate the power. So first thing you do, of course, is to recall the energy of power. I mean, equation of power. That is E over T. And you have the E, which is from the previous question. You have the T. And so for sure that you can calculate the answer. And that is 864 over T, which is 4.4. And then calculator again. And you get 196 point something. So I'll keep it as, I think, 3 to 2 to 3 sec will be good. So I'll take it as 3. So 196 joule. Wait, not joule. Joule per second. Or you can say W watt. Part D, it said that the power is going to be constant and then the mass is greater than 36 kg, so M increase with the same height. So suggest what happened to um, the operation of the belt. So this kind of question is in fact very general, very typical in IGCSE physics. If you recall, we have encountered a very similar question in the previous chapter when you learn about liquid pressure, fluid pressure. Uh, they ask you, hey, what happened to the pressure? Because pressure is rho gh for fluid, right? And what happened if, uh, I, I can't remember, but it's changing from, I think, the pure water to sea water or the other way around. So it's something like uh, the density increase will happen to the pressure. So obviously it will increase also. So these kind of techniques will be very important and you need to use the way that uh, I teach you and also with the equation and notation as well to plan before you write down the answer. Okay, always have a good plan before you write. So here the first thing to do, okay, you can write down the step if you like to. First step you do is to write the equation, which is uh, in this case would simply be, I guess, power equals to energy over time. And then that will be MGH, right, for the energy. And then the second step that you do is to look at what change in these variables. So you know H doesn't change, so put a cross next to it. G doesn't change because we are on the same planet, I suppose. And it's that M increase, all right? And on the other hand, uh, ignore this one. This is just the intermediate steps, but then look at P and also this uh, whole fraction. P, they already said is constant, so cross here. And so eventually, leaving you with only one variable, that is the time. So if you look at the mathematical relationship, since power is a constant, and that means this whole fraction has to be a constant, and if M increased, then T also has to increase. So this is our plan. So for the actual word and what you can say about it is you can say by the equation P equals to energy over time uh, when, okay, I'll just write the symbol. You can write the full form and you should, right? Cause you can't use this symbol in the exam. But for simplicity, I'll just write symbol here. When M increase, then the energy will increase cause energy equal to MGH. So energy will increase and because power is constant or unchanged and therefore t time would increase also okay so that is all for this video in the next video we'll try another two question which is supposed to be slightly more challenging i'll see you again in the next video bye